What's up guys and welcome to this little review to the hands I played on the feature table of the ADD Live event in Rosbodov last week. There's some interesting spots in there, a couple of mistakes I did, so let's hop right into the action. Looks like we got an extra player coming in. Oh, it's your buddy! Hey, Bulero! He's on Twitch, right? Yeah. Chat's go. gonna love it. What's up, Henry? What's his uh, Twitch stream? Bulero. Oh, fair enough. What is uh, Bulero aggressive? What, what, what's his uh, MO? Honestly, he's like relatively new to poker. He's only been playing poker for like a year and a half or so. Right. He's only 20 years old, right? He's, he's a baby. kid. He's a kid. So we have a raise to 2,000 from Henry and Myers thinking about it with Queen Poor suited. Henry raising pretty wide under the gun here. 8 6 suited. So loose open for sure. Robert coming in with a call with the 7 6 suited. Little does he know he's dominated, but it shouldn't really matter. It's not really one of those situations where, like, unless they hit trip sixes, both. Two of Henry's eights are dead, so he's probably not hitting an eight too often here. I, I think it's in a... Wow, what a flop for him. Holy what a Jesus. flop. I wow. Mean, you can't, I mean, he must have known what's going on here. Look at this. Robert flops the stones with backdoor flush draw, redraw, and Henry with... Uh, <laughs> A gut shot and a flush draw. Yeah, just an absolute we, monster flop. We can see fireworks if, oh, uh, for sure. if Robert ra manages to raise the flop. He probably won't, though. I would have guessed Henry's probably going to bet like anywhere from 3 three to 5k, and then Robert's just going to call. Are you surprised that Henry opens so wide with Dominique and the chip leader directly on his left? Not really, because of the positions. If they're like cut off button small blind or something like that, then it's a lot different. Right. Uh, it's pretty frustrating that our uh, thing's not working. <laughs> So it does look like a bet. It looks pretty small, like 2100 or something. I definitely agree with Tonka there. I do mistakes like that quite often playing live poker where I miscalculate the part and bet like a smaller sizing instead of the right sizing. In this case, you definitely want to bet around 70-80% part, given that that's what I would do with pocket nines, even with aces to protect my hand. Also, you make a fold to do the broad base that reflects us for three. And in case we do hit, we can build a nice and big part because we have a ton of outs. 2200, okay. 2200. Robert just calls. Oh! oh! The flush and the straight. With yeah. The, with the straight flush redraw. Big hand for Henry, potentially. Yeah, I mean... He should barrel. He's got to build a pot. I mean, obviously, a black seven would have been a much better card for him because there's no way Robert gets away from it. Now, with the flush out there, maybe Robert, slow, maybe Robert just doesn't, you know, go broke. Um, we should be... But Henry's sizings are a bit too small here. He should have bet about 4,000 on the flop, and he should have bet about... You know, six to eight thousand on the turn. Again, gotta agree with Tonka there. We should bet around eight k here. The pot is around ten k. I definitely miscalculated there, and we just see how one mistake on a flop adds up on the turn, and we could have won so much more chips in that hand, and yeah, get punished. Great river for Henry to get action though. Um, so I don't know why our things are having such a big issue here, but there is about fourteen, eighteen, about twenty thousand chips in the pot, slightly over twenty. So I'm hoping to see, you know, some somewhere in the realm of twelve to eighteen thousand from Henry. Yeah, I mean, well, once your opponent calls you on the turn, With um, like, you've got to be, you have to think that he's he's got a fairly big hand or at least a big draw. If he's got a big draw, he's not going to call you no matter what. Exactly. Um, and I don't think checking to get him to bluff makes much sense because he will call you with a set here and stuff like that. He'll, he'll, he'll call you with a six. Oh no! You're not raising. Yeah. Raise? You can't raise. Three hearts out there. What are you doing? You turn your hand to a bluff, right? I, I don't think Robert. I don't think Robert's turning his hand into a bluff. Yeah, he just calls. He just calls yeah, yeah. I think I think Henry should have bet more. I think Henry missed out on, you know, a lot of value on that hand. Just a bit too small sizings, like. So yeah, on the river I should bet slightly bigger. I mean, thirteen k is certainly fine, but we could definitely part it in a spot as well. Put him in a tough spot with the six, even though I think he would never fold. Robert, obviously, he's just in a dirty spot and got a call off with the sixes. Raising doesn't make any sense because he never got called by hand that you actually beat. You might push me off a chop, but given all the flash rolls I can have in this spot, it's just completely ridiculous to do that. What is Bennett doing? Limping under the gun with ace 10? Henry Iso him with 3.2k with the ace 8 suity. I like yeah, that. I, just, I, like I, that. I don't really like limping in. I mean, ace 10 specifically, ace 10 off suit. It's just not a hand that plays well multi way. No. Like raise or fold? Yeah. And I mean, raising with 18 big blinds under the gun also isn't very good. Wow, dream flop for Henry in this situation. Yeah, I mean... Not that he can know this is a dream flop, but I mean, he's got to be pretty happy with it just in general. Oh, of course. 
We get to the flop in a weird spot. Our opponent has 20 big blinds and limbs. I put out the 3x versus him since I expect him to be really passive. And he makes the call with the ace-10. Obviously he should just raise that, especially in this hand the big blind was sitting out, what the commentators do not notice. And therefore I expect him to limp even a little bit wider. He makes the call with the ace-10 and now on this flop we have a clear c bet and call versus stack size. Obviously I'm not super happy, he can have some smaller pairs that flop the set. But usually we just have to go with, given that he could have something like a6, 10, 9, and an easy bad call for us on the flop. He called? Yeah, Biceps is uh, not playing this hand very well. Wow. He just called. So I'm he limps in, confused. he limps in, calls a raise, and now calls a bet. I'm and, and he's confused. got, and he's, by the way, he's got like no chips. He's like a 12k behind, this 15k in the middle. Yeah, I, I just don't really understand the play. And he's checking again. I guess it's going to go check, check here. I'd imagine. I, I, don't. I mean, I don't really know why Henry would want to bet, you know? Yeah. I mean, Hard to get gotta, value from worse. He's scared of, like, Bennett slow playing, like, a big pair at this point or something. So the check check and the king comes off. I mean, I assume it's just going to go check check on the river and Bilero's going to win. I mean, bluffing doesn't make any sense. I might. I might honestly, if my opponent checks the river, I might bet, bet this. Value. Yeah. And get called by, you know, a seven. Get called by a smaller eight. And I guess he just leads all of his... Actually, strong value hands. Is that a... No, I mean, I might even put Bennett on, like, on. deuces or threes, you know? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna... Yeah, for sure, for sure. I'm gonna bet, like, uh... The scary thing is I feel like he might have, like, fives or sixes sometimes, and, like, but, like, he probably bets those, you know? I think so. He might not bet fives, but I think he does bet sixes. The turn is definitely a check on my end. I really don't know what my opponent has at this point. I expect him to jam a lot on the flop without most of his draws, his sets. So I'm really confused at what he has at this point, maybe some like 8-9 suited or so, but even that he might jam on the flop, so I wasn't really sure where I'm at and took the safe route with the check, especially when there are 4 cards too straight out there. On the river the king peels off and now it's a pretty tough spot in my opinion if you want to value bet or not. I still think he could have some like checks that he just calls with on the flop or 10s or 9s, like I'm really confused at this point, really have no idea what I'm up against, so I decided to check it instead of facing like a bet and then a jam or something like that. So I was really confused and I just decided to check it down. And I think that's fine, you know, if you don't really have an idea what's going on in the hand, your opponent is short and he has even less than a pot size bet left, taking the check there cannot be too big of a mistake. These weren't the most exciting hands that you guys will ever see, but it was certainly exciting for me to be in the feature table there for the first time. Had a lot of fun at the event and just wanted to give you guys on YouTube an insight in the hands as well in case you missed the Twitch stream, also my thought process throughout the hands. If you guys enjoy a series like that, there's enough of the footage left with some interesting spots yet to come. So if you enjoy more and want to see more, definitely let me know in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button also. Sub always helps me out guys, daily videos here on YouTube. Thank you for hanging out. Cheers.